Hey everyone and welcome back. So in this video we're going to start the implementation of the character customization system. In the previous video I obviously went through a brief rundown that I've provided a free template project for people to get started with just the basic assets that you're going to need to follow along to make this easier uh, and I did mention that I didn't have the full prototype finished so I was kind of demoing what we would get at the end of the project with kind of a half finished uh, setup. So just before we did jump into this, I wanted to give a quick update. This in the background now is what we can expect to see in the final build. So when we finish this playlist, you should have something working like this. So like I mentioned, we have the available funds that we have to spend on the objects. We can now fully filter through the different headpieces. And like I've mentioned, we now have a kind of dynamic button system where if you can't afford it, then we're going to grey the button out uh, because we can see this one costs 300. We don't have that in the funds yet. We can equip the or unequip any headpieces at all. And things that I've already purchased will also show here as just being equipable. And if we've not purchased anything, then we have the option to buy it here. That will then instantly change this to be equipable and it will have saved that immediately so that we can uh, remember that when we come back, we now have the Mohawk thing as well. So if we press equip on that, the last thing is that we can hit proceed. That will take us into the other level. This is just a quick pickup to give us some more funds. And then if we go back in and play again, we've added some more funds from that pickup and you can see that it remembers what we were wearing last and we can go in and out of the level with our chosen headpieces to keep getting the currency and things like that. So this is what we're gonna expect by the end of the playlist. Just wanted to show that so you know what you're gonna be getting by following along. So sorry about the intro, but we'll move on straight away into building the first part of our project. Okay, so to get this started, this is gonna be one of those playlists where, like I mentioned, it's gonna be a little bit more intermediate, um, not, not, it's not going to be incredibly difficult to follow along with, but there will be a lot of videos where we create things and we don't really see much happening. So I couldn't find a completely logical way to start this, whereas in the past I would have just created a player because we can immediately move around with the player, things like that. Uh, I think the best approach for this playlist is we're going to flesh out the menu system because that is kind of where a lot of the logic is. Uh, centers around and then when we have the menu system ready to go we can just kind of come back and hook things in as in when we add the save systems and things like that. So to get that started I'm just going to create a new folder in the blueprints folder. I'm going to call this one widgets although we'll probably only have one. If you wanted to add custom buttons and things like that you can do that here but because we only have a few buttons I'm just going to create everything in a single widget. So I'm going to go user interface and widget blueprint and I'll call this one uh, wbp underscore menu for widget blueprint menu. So inside of the menu, we're just going to flesh this out with the visuals to begin with. So we've got something that looks kind of like what I just demonstrated a moment ago. So just for tidiness, really, I'm going to house everything first of all inside of a vertical box. So if we just drag a vertical box onto the canvas, we'll just make sure that we center align this to begin with. So I'll put the anchor point in the middle. We can set this to size to content. This is just so that we can easily set things to have different margins and things and it will all be kind of aligned within the box that we put on the right hand corner. And then that's the next thing is I put the alignment 2.5 on the X and the Y. So this is exactly center. And then we can just move this over a little bit closer to where we want this to be. We can move this around a bit later, uh, but I know that the menu is gonna be somewhere around here. So I'll put that there for now and that should be perfectly fine. So the next thing is we're going to get a text element. So we can just drag a text element onto the vertical box. I'm going to rename this one because this will be a variable text and this is going to be our available funds. So we're going to need to update this by some blueprint logic a bit later. So we'll just make sure that we tick is variable just here. And I'm going to change the font straight away to uh, light just because I think that looks a little bit better. So set this text box up as you need it and want all of the other text to look. And then we can just copy this and reuse it when we add in the rest of the text a bit later. So I'm also just going to change the text here just to say available funds and then add some number just so we can get an idea of how this is going to look uh, and the overall placement. Okay, so we know it's going to look something like this. Next, I'm going to drag in a horizontal box. And this is going to be for our buttons and uh, just the heads up text saying that we're toggling between different headpieces. So again, I'm going to copy the text that we had a moment ago and I will paste that into the horizontal box. And we can worry about the margins and things a little bit later. I just wanna get everything in to begin with. And now the first thing is I'm just going to untick this as being variable and rename this to be text headpiece. 
just so we can quickly get an idea of what all of these are whilst we're looking at them. The text is going to stay the same on this, so we're just going to set this to say select headpiece. Nice and simple, and again, we worry about all of the alignments and things because we're going to add some buttons, so we'll do that a little bit later. So for this, I'm just going to use a standard button. So I'm going to drag that again into the horizontal box. I'm going to set this up once, and then we'll change this. And then we'll copy this over for the other button that we'll be using. The style that I want this to have is going to be completely blank. So I'm just going to set the tint of this, so the, the color, to be completely see-through by turning the alpha down. Uh, we can copy this, so copy and then paste this for all of the others as well because we don't want this to change when we hover over or click the button. Uh, the other thing we want is a bit of text again, so I'll copy this text we have here, place this on the button, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an arrow for going back an object and also one for going forward an object, so that's going to be our button. So I'll call this one button back uh, or button previous. Just going to drop that so it's above the previous text that we have so that it will fall in front of this and then I'll copy this and again paste that into the horizontal box and this one I'm just going to change the text so it's facing the, using the other bracket and then we'll call this one button next. So this is ready starting to come together only a few more buttons to make and things like that we have our menu pretty much ready to go. Come back over here and get another horizontal box and again we're just going to drag that onto the vertical box. We can start naming these as well actually so uh, we can call this, uh, I tend to just abbreviate this to be like HOS for horizontal and then uh, what it is containing so I'm going to call this one HOS headpieces. I call this one HOS buy so this is going to be the horizontal box which is holding the buy button and the cost uh, value if, if that is applicable. If we create another button uh, by dragging that onto the new horizontal box, call the button immediately, we'll just change this to be button by. And again, we'll do some visual tweaks on this so it's ready to go and we can reuse this as the final button to uh, for the proceed button that we had. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this horrible gradient thing again. I'm going to go and put the view options on, show the engine content and just search for square. This is going to give us a white square texture so that will make it look a little bit tidier and a little bit more modern. Like we did previously, we can copy this, so we can copy the normal state now, paste that for the hovered and the press, and that way all we need to do is just give this a slightly different tint so that we can see that this is changing when we hover over the button, uh, and that saves you changing all of these individually. So that's going to be our three different states, and that's perfectly fine. And then if you wanted to remember, we can just use one of these, drop this down and untick the engine content just so we've only got the things back in our project to keep the, uh, the list views a bit tidier too. If we just go back to the text up here, the one which is already a variable because we're going to want to dynamically change the text on this button, paste that onto the button and change the color so this is a little bit darker so we can see this. Just set this for now to be by, so again we can get an idea of how this is going to look. And making that a variable will allow us in the logic later to change this to be equip by things like that depending on what the headpiece is that we're looking at. And then again we want another variable text so I'm just going to grab the available funds again because this is still white and place this next to the button in the horizontal layout and we'll change this to say cost and we'll just leave that the value of 200. Again, as always, just so that we have some idea of how this is going to look and how this is all going to fit into our menu and widget over here. Okay, so then finally, if we just select the button buy, we can just paste this at the very bottom of our vertical box. This is going to be the last thing we need. We'll change the button to be called button proceed, and we can just change the text to also say proceed, and we can toggle that from being a variable because that, again, is never going to change. And then for this button, if we just set this to um, be left aligned and automatically sized, that will just make it fit the text. It look a little bit tidier. And in fact, if I just make this video completely focusing on the visuals of the menu, uh, we can get all of that out of the way now. So I'm going to come up to this, make this a little bit more of a title. So I'm going to give this a big padding at the bottom let's say something like 20 so it's a lot further away from the other pieces so it kind of sticks out a little bit more if we first of all in fact set all of this to be 10 so we get a 10 pixel margin around everything uh, and then set the bottom margin itself to also be something like 50 uh, we can keep all of this kind of tidily inside of the vertical box as well it's just going to make it a little bit easier for us to navigate around as we go through the project so for the horizontal box, the head pieces here, uh, we can give this a smaller margin of something like five, and then we can give each individual uh, button and bit of text a five pixel margin as well. 
And then if we just set all of these to be vertically aligned in the middle, just so that they look a little bit tidier with their alignment next to each other. So that's for the button next, previous, and the text. And we're gonna do a similar thing for everything else. So give the whole thing a five pixel margin for these. Uh, give the button itself a five pixel margin. And then the text also a five pixel margin. And just make sure that this is vertically aligned to the middle. Uh, again, just looking a little bit tidier there. And the final thing, just give this a, because there's no horizontal box, just give this a 10 just grab the press, uh, proceed button and give this a complete 10 pixel margin. So everything is kind of moved away from each other. We can easily select the buttons when we come over this. Now, one other thing uh, that people get tripped up on is the text can actually block. So we're gonna quickly go to the previous and the next buttons. I completely forgot about this uh, until I was just hovering over them. We want to make sure that when we go down here, uh, we've got this to be visible, uh, but not hit testable. Uh, just because especially as these buttons are actually quite small, if you click on the text, uh, it will not actually recognize the buttons being pressed because it kind of acts as a collider on top of the button. So people get a bit confused sometimes while they're pressing something uh, and every now and again, the button doesn't seem to work. Uh, it's probably because you've got some text or an image overlaying it, which has a collision, which is blocking the button's collision. So we just make sure that we set that to not hit testable, but we can still see it. So with that done, we can actually come back in to wrap this up. We'll go to our blueprint class uh, again, if you're following along, you have all of this. And then if we go to our BP player controller menu, so this is the one which is automatically set to be used in the game mode menu, which is the entry game mode that we'll be using. So this will be our uh, entry mode for the entry map, which is the menu. And what we want to do is we've, I've already got it so that we've set this up to be the input mode of UI only, so we can't move the character around and the mouse cursor is already visible. And we've done that so that we can then create our menu widget. So create widget. We are just gonna use the WBP underscore menu that we've just made, and then we'll add this to the viewport. Uh, with that done, we will now have the menu appearing when we press start. And I think just for aesthetic value, I'm going to come back in and move the camera a little bit to the right. Uh, I've got a snapping value of 100, so 100 units over, and that looks a little bit more interesting. We can change the size of this and make it look a bit better if you wanted. I'm gonna leave that as it is because this is gonna be completely functional. We can see we can click on these buttons, uh, the buy, proceed, and everything will all work perfectly fine. So I'm gonna leave that as it is as that leaves us with the uh, the menu at least ready to start adding the logic to. As always though, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that always helps. And if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the content coming to any of the players on the channel, uh, do consider hitting the subscribe button and of course, clicking the notification bell now is helping a lot of channels. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.